Thank you for the introduction and for the opportunity to present here. I have no disclosures. So as surgeons, we solve problems every day from patient care to diagnostic to technical problems. So I think it's no surprise that often surgeons come up with solutions to problems that nobody else has solved yet. So if you in the audience have an idea and you're thinking of taking the next steps with that, this is definitely a talk for you. Today we're going to talk about pitching and business competitions. I'll tell you about my experience with that. We'll discuss if this could be a good opportunity for you. We will talk about how to find an appropriate pitch competition. I hear there's one happening tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about what the judges and the audience members will be looking for. Then we'll touch on the technicalities of how to make the slides and deliver the pitch. And last but not least, we'll talk about what happens after the pitch. So I was one of those children that asked way too many questions. And unfortunately or fortunately, I haven't quite shaken that habit well into my adult years. So as a fourth year surgery resident, I was operating with my attending, doing a complex ventral hernia, and he put a coker on each side of the fascia, pulled it to the midline, and was feeling how much tension there was before deciding how to close it. And so I asked him, you know, can you really tell if there's too much tension? And he said, you know, honestly, I can't. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if we had a device that could measure the amount of tension on the fascia as we bring it to the midline? And so the idea for my device was born. I took three of my co-residents on the journey of trying to figure out how to bring this to a reality. In our journey, we were able to uh, compete in four business competitions. We won some, we lost some. We definitely learned a lot along the way and I'm going to share some of the insight that I learned today here with you. So if you have an idea, is that enough to pitch it? And the answer is essentially yes. Do you need an MBA? Absolutely not. Do you need to have an incorporated startup? The answer is no. In fact, some business competitions don't want you to be incorporated. They want you to be in some early stage. That can be defined by how much money you've raised, how long you've been incorporated, or even that you haven't. Do you need a real life product? The answer is no. However, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a prototype is worth a thousand pictures. So it is very helpful to have something 3D, even if it's non-functional, to hand the judges, have them see what your idea is so that they get a clear representation. Do you need a patent? We already talked about this. Clearly that is helpful. So the history of business competitions is interesting. They initially started as a place to practice pitching to customers and investors. And they've evolved into ha some having crazy prizes of over a million dollars, some being crazy in the way that you have to eat a jalapeno while you're pitching. I definitely didn't try that one. Um, but the two main reasons that people pitch are because they're either trying to raise money for their idea, or they're trying to build a team, or meet people that will advance their idea. So now that you've decided that you want to pitch, a good place to start looking for a competition is your university if you're affiliated with one, or if, even if you live in the vicinity of one. The upsides of this is they'll often give you resources that other competitions won't. They'll often give you an advisor or a mentor to help you walk through the business um, or finance uh, aspects of your presentation, which can be very helpful. There are city and state-based competitions as well. Both the university and the regional competitions will attract a wide variety of competitors, which can have the downside in that your health idea might be difficult to evaluate if the judges are used to hearing tech and app and high turnover ideas. So to really shine, I think um, looking at industry-based competitions in med tech and health tech is to your advantage. And there are also minority and female pitch opportunities present, so definitely keep an eye out for those. What are the judges looking for? First and foremost, they want to understand the problem that you're trying to solve. No matter how great your device is, if somebody doesn't need it, it's going to be a lot harder to sell it. Then they want to understand the solution or how does your idea work. Uh, they, one thing is that they will believe you that your idea works. So if you say that you have a flying operating robot, they are gonna believe you that it both flies and operates. They're gonna trust you with that. They are gonna to wanna to evaluate your team. So you don't have to come in with a full great board of directors, uh, A plus core team, but they do wanna see who's on your team. And also participating in pitch competitions can be a great way to meet people that will eventually become your teammates. 
then they wanna know how your idea will become a reality. So a little bit about going to the market, the financial questions. Basically, if you think of Shark Tank and all the questions that they're asked after the, their pitch, those are all fair game. I think something that's very helpful in making your pitch slides are using a pitch deck template. If you search for that online, there will be hundreds of different options, different styles. There, some of them are free, some of them are a couple of dollars, but they're definitely worth the money, the time that you'll save making these. Some come with hundreds of different slides that you can easily adapt to your presentation. If your business competition doesn't have very specific guidelines of what kind of slides to use, most people who pitch use the Guy Kawasaki 10 slides. Those are, number one, the title slide. Number two, the slide describing the problem that you're trying to solve. The third slide is the value proposition that solving this problem will bring to your customer. Number four is your solution, your idea, your secret sauce, and how it works. The business model is how your idea is going to make you and the investors money. The go-to-market is the steps that you're going to take to reach your customer without breaking the bank. Then you want to talk about your competitive analysis or the edge that you'll have on your target market. You want to describe your management team, including your advisors and your core team. You want to give at least three years of financial projections and key metrics such as customers gained or devices sold. And last but not least, you want to tell them the current status of your idea, the next couple of steps or prototype iterations, and what you are going to do with the money that you're looking for. So you get the pitch, you go up there, you definitely want to uh, channel your inner TED talker. You want to be clear. You want to describe your idea in non-medical terms that your non-medical family can understand and remember clearly. You definitely want to be enthusiastic. If you're not going to be enthusiastic about your idea, nobody else is. You want to be memorable. You want the investors to remember you and your idea the next day. So a good way to test for this is to give your friends your pitch and the next day ask them what they remember. You definitely want to sound polished, so practice your talk and prepare for questions. Most of these will have a pretty good length Q&A afterwards. Some are longer than the pitch was, and it can be a good idea to, to make slides ahead of time that can help you answer the questions if you know there's gonna be a predictable question. So you've pitched, you're walking off the stage, and now one or two things can happen. First is you could win something. You could win a big check, you could win a resource, it could just be a trophy, it goes on your shelf, in your resume, that's all good. But the other thing that can happen is you can network and meet people after the pitch. So sometimes the pitch is kind of like the beauty pageant with the real deal, handshakes and business deals going on afterwards. So just keep in mind that the conversation can be started with the pitch, but can continue with the investors afterwards. So definitely be prepared for that. Bring your business cards and bring your asks of the investors and know what you're gonna be talking. So the talk away points from this talk are that if you have an idea, you can pitch it. Do use the Guy Kawasaki 10 slides. I highly recommend using the pitch deck template slides. And I'm going to leave you with two resources that I think are very valuable. One is a wealth of videos and lectures at the Y Combinator Accelerator in their library section. Basically tells you everything you need to know to start your own startup if that's what you're interested in and 1milliancups.com is a great organization to practice pitching, so they'll give you feedback and you can do this organization before uh, starting to pitch in business competitions yourself. I think it's a great way to practice. I wish you all the very best of luck and definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or you think I can help you at all in any way.